I don't want to hear that we were lucky to win with the Pacers yesterday. Absolutely no apologies for Victor Oladipo hitting that 27-foot three-pointer with six-tenths of a second to go on the game to get us to cover. Because for every back-breaking, heart-breaking, backdoor cover we've suffered over the years, I say we were owed that win. In fact, I say we deserve to have a win like that. Absolutely. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're nodding your heads in agreement. You know we deserve to win those games. Now, truth be told, I think more often than not, over the long haul, we win more games like that than we lose. Of course, when you're on the wrong side of those back-breaking, heart-breaking backdoor covers, you don't want to hear what I'm selling you. You don't want to hear that I think that we win more than we lose. But the fact is, we really do. But it felt good yesterday, did it not? So I cash in with the top rated 15 dime best bet winner yesterday again. And just about every single handicapper here at the site had the Pacers yesterday as well. And in the late game, just about everybody had the Houston Rockets too. So it was a great day here at the site. But I'll tell you what, let's talk about that late game for a second. Uh, I gave you the Rockets yesterday as a complimentary play. The problem with the Rockets you saw once more yesterday. This is a team that when you're laying the big number, you always have to be leery. Jump out to the 25-point lead at halftime. They're up 18 points going into the fourth quarter. They're laying 11 and a half. The Jazz then immediately score the first eight points of the fourth quarter, making an 11-point game. Now the Rockets did come back. They did put on another scoring spurt. They did cover the spread. But this is a team that often, during the course of the game, their intensity level wanes goes up and down this is a team that doesn't play a lot of defense right and you just have to be always an overly cautious laying the big number with the rockets because of their lack of intensity and focus over the course of four quarters and you saw that in play yesterday but that's yesterday we've got game number one of the sixers celtics tonight of course, that's my best bet, so I can't talk about that game. I am going to give you a complimentary play in baseballs. I've been on a red-hot roll with the freebies as well. 19 and 10 run, I think, is the complimentary play run. Uh, hey, quick props uh, going out to uh, Shawn Michaels. You know, I don't know how many of you like to play teasers. I'm a big teaser fan. He did it again yesterday. His uh, NBA teaser of the year, part number two. He's only had two of them. They both come in the playoffs. First one on the very first day of the playoffs. Uh, second one yesterday as he had the Pacers plus the points and the Rockets minus the points. It was a 50-dime winner. And today he has something twice as strong, another 100-dime max wager winner. Uh, playoff winner number 11 out of 15. The side tonight as he goes for winner number 12 out of 16 overall the past three and a half weeks. You get it for over half price off by using coupon code HOOPS. But back to teasers. Going back to football season, he's won six of his last seven. And over the past six years, teasers in football and basketball combined, he's on a 61 and 32 roll. Listen, I love teasers too, but it really is something. And these are all two team teasers. A lot of guys like to play these exotic teasers, which is just ridiculous. Anything more than a two team teaser is a joke. Because mathematically, the odds are stacked against you. I don't care how many points you're getting. The more points doesn't mean more success, okay? The greater the odds, the greater the points. Forget about it. Play two teamers, look for your spots, and strike. And that is Sean's philosophy as well. 61 and 32 in football and basketball over the past six years. Pretty damn impressive. Anyway, that's the big play to be focused on here tonight. Um, quick little story for you. A couple days ago in a video report, I happened to mention to you that when I was still in college, um, I had a great internship that eventually led to a job working at the uh, predecessor, or to my first job in the industry, uh, working at the predecessor to uh, Comcast Sports in Philadelphia. Uh, and it was working for my great, great friend, <coughs> uh, Jim Gray at the time. Uh, but the good part about the job, and there were some good parts, that I got to um, work exclusively in the pregame and the postgame shows for uh, the Philadelphia 76ers and the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. And, of course, the 76ers, 
in Philadelphia growing up, the 76ers were the team that I first started following as a little kid. Now, first year that I ever really followed sports, it wasn't a great year for Philadelphia 76ers fans because that was the year that they went 9-73. and 73. So, uh, but then George McGinnis comes to town, John Julius Irving comes to town, things got massively better. So it's 1982, right? And here I am, I'm fresh in college, teenager, and Sixers are good. Year before, they lost Eastern Conference Finals to the Celtics. They were up 3-1. Boston comes back. They win it. This year, they're in the Eastern Conference Finals again. Boston wins the first game, just like the previous year. 3-1. Sixers go up. Boston wins the next two games. Well, I'm covering them, right, every day. We're there, pre-game, post-game, whatever, in the locker room. And... The cool part about this, and if you're a sports fan, you can relate to this. The cool part about this, these are the guys, night in, night out, that I'm watching, that I've collected their NBA trading cards, their base, uh, basketball cards. I've watched them on TV, and suddenly I'm in the locker room, and it's like, hey, that's Julius Irving, that's Daryl Dawkins, that's Bobby Jones. And now the Celtics are in town, and it's like, damn, that's Larry Bird, that's Robert Peckers. These, these are all the greats, you know? I mean, these are the guys that I grew up watching on TV. And of course, in that series, Eastern Conference Finals, I was thinking of it today, this is the game that Sixers, after blowing the 3-1 lead, they go up to Boston. Andrew Toney, the Boston Strangler, earns his reputation by going up there, scoring 34 points, and the Sixers win it 4-3. It was the series where when the Celtics, realizing their uh, the Celtics fans were going to lose, they started chanting, beat L.A., beat L.A. Well, the Sixers didn't beat L.A., but then the Lakers come to town. And now I'm in the locker room and I'm going, damn, that's Kareem. And first time I'd ever seen Kareem. And guys, I'm charitably five foot nine, right? So I'm five foot nine and I've got this 13 pound camera on my back. And I'm going in the locker room and the first time and Jim is interviewing Kareem Abdul Jabbar. And Kareem is standing up. Kareem's seven, two and a half, I think legitimately. And I've got the camera and he's doing a stand up. And I'm, you know, and I'm looking and I'm going, wow. You know, I've got my knees bent, the camera up on my shoulder, pulling it up in the air. And I'm going, damn, 7'2 is pretty darn big when you got to have a camera on your shoulder trying to get a stand up. And I'm thinking, man, Mr. Jabbar, would you please sit down and make my shot a little easier here? But, uh, and then there's magic. And I'm thinking to myself, last week I'm meeting Larry Bird. This week I'm meeting magic. A couple of years ago, I'm watching these guys playing the big dance. This is really something. Anyway, the Lakers won that series 4-2 because Magic was just unstoppable. And uh, that was it for the Sixers. But we got him the next year because that guy Moses Malone came around town and took care of business. But uh, so I was thinking of that today when the uh, Celtics and the uh, Sixers are going to uh, open their series tonight. Um, so let's talk about the uh, complimentary play tonight. Uh, I'm going to go with another Philadelphia team. I like the Phillies. Um, who got off to a great start at their most recently completed homestand by sweeping the Pittsburgh Pirates. Then Arizona and Atlanta came in. Uh, they lost 2 out of 3 to Arizona. They lost 2 out of 3 to uh, the Atlanta Braves. The one game they did beat in the Arizona series was pitched by uh, Jake Arrieta. Now, Arietta's first start for the Phillies uh, came against Miami, and he did not pitch well. But remember, uh, it was really almost like an another, uh, another extended spring training start uh, back on April 8th, and he wasn't really in game shape. Uh, lasted four innings, gave up three runs. But since then, his three subsequent starts, all Phillies wins, he's pitched very well, working six and two-third innings against Tampa, uh, on the road, uh, seven innings against uh, Pittsburgh at home, seven innings against Arizona at home. And in those three starts, a total of 20 and two-third innings, he's only allowed three earned runs and 12 hits. Last year, as a member of the Cubs, he faced the Marlins twice. He won both of those starts, and he authored an earned run average of 2.08. Now, the Marlins are going to go with Dan Straley tonight. He is making his season debut after suffering a uh, strained forearm early in spring training, which kept him on the shelf. Last year, he faced the Phillies five times. In those starts, he had an earned run average of 6.28, giving up 42 hits and six homers among those 42 hits in 28 and two-third innings. And that was against a Phillies lineup that was not nearly as explosive or potent as the lineup that they are going to field today. 
Now, of course, Arietta being a Miami team twice last year in two starts, that had a far more potent offense than the one the Marlins are going to field today. Now, the Marlins are coming off wins the past two days against Colorado, and they've won four of their last five overall. But in looking at the Marlins, I was wondering how their offense has been faring. Well, it hasn't been faring well. They have only scored more than three runs seven times in their last 23 games. The Phillies, after starting the season 1-4, and four, have won 15 of their last 22 games, and I'm going to go with the Phillies here today. Uh, this price has jumped up to about $1.35, but that's okay. I'd even lay up to $1.40 with the Phillies here. I don't think there's any necessity to go ahead and play them on the run line here. So the Phillies, minus the $1.30.35, that's the play I'm going to go with for your comp play today. Good luck, everybody, and talk to you again tomorrow when we do it again.